All right, in light of recent events, it's time to start fixing our cooling system on the STI. So I believe I have everything ordered for this thing. Uh, most of it shows up tomorrow. The fan shows up today. Um, we're going to be doing a new radiator shroud on the radiator. We're going to be doing a larger fan. We're going to be using one of our older fans, but we're going to offset it a little bit. We're going to be taking off our Cylinder 6 cooling mod. We'll talk about that here in a little bit because I've learned some more things regarding those that could be more detrimental to an engine rather than beneficial. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. But yeah, let me show you where we left off because we, we have a lot to do. We're also going to be going over the shop to work on the Evo a little bit today. So you're getting some mixed content stuff. So with our lovely STI here, we have a week to get this thing up and running again um, and to trailer it over to Spokane for the dyno. So everything for this thing has been ordered. That Cylinder 6 cooling mod's coming off, like I said. I deleted the lower thermostat in the last video as you guys can see it's not there anymore the metal shroud and the gasket is there just to seal on that this coolant crossover has to come off which means i have to disconnect a couple fuel lines i'm um, to be able to get that guy out move the harness out of the way a little bit and we can slide it out that guy we're going to cut off this old mishimoto crap we're also getting rid of this because that pressurizes so i need to take that out of the car today and we're going to be swapping over to this beautiful vibrant water neck i ordered the wrong radiator cap so i returned it the new one shows up in a day or two we're swapping out this chase base coolant overflow because it doesn't actually do what it's supposed to do and it just pressurizes the cooling system um, which is not what we want so that thing is full of coolant because it just builds vacuum in the system so i need to drain that into that little subaru coolant bottle i have over there this guy's coming out i can't even get the cap back on right now that guy's going to be coming out and it's going to be getting replaced with a cob unit that actually vents like it's supposed to i looked this up they have a second nipple down here i thought it was just a second option for coolant um overflow in here nah that's just to vent it out all to the ground which is not what we want that is literally no track will approve us to vent out coolant to the ground that's just that's not okay so uh, we're going to be replacing the echo the cob unit the first thing we're going to be doing today is uh tearing apart this old shroud so as you guys can see this is literally just an aluminum panel that's been welded onto the radiator so i need to go through here and cut these welds i need to be very careful doing this to not damage the radiator uh, but we have to get this off i have a new shroud that we're going to be building we're going to offset the bottom of it a little bit so that way it comes out at a little bit of an angle to allow airflow to move through it um, and then we're also going to be utilizing one of these older fans and then i've also got a big 12 inch fan that's going to be going on here all of the measurements these stick out farther than my big 12 inch fan that i ordered the 12 inch fan should move about 1300 cfm which is more than both of these combined um, and one of these moves about 500 so i'm going to try to use one of these i don't know if i'm going to be able to fit two but if not one of them will still be way more beneficial than just having these two so uh, let's start today off by uh being very careful and cutting some welds to get the shroud off we ain't playing no more fuck fuck games all right so first thing i gotta do is take off these fans there's one fan off two fans off all right so it looks like we have a full weld up on the top of this and then three smaller welds down on the bottom so let's get the shroud off of here oh dude i can just crack the welds I'm legit just breaking the well. Look at that. This is a 12 inch fan. So, I can run a 12 right there. Well, I don't think that's gonna fit there, Jimbo. What if I push you up more? I push you down more. If we offset it and we move the shroud, we could have you go there and you go there. If we build the shroud back far enough again, then we can have the fans like that. So this fan will move around 1300 CFM. This one will move around 500. So combined, we're looking at like 1800 CFM, which is way more than we were looking at before. Let's take off our coolant crossover so we can cut off our vibrant dude or cut off the Mishimoto crap. I need to pull that reservoir out first, otherwise it's just gonna make a complete mess everywhere. Because as much as I love making messes, I, I actually don't. This is the worst coolant overflow I think I have ever seen. Um, sweet, so we'll just let you kind of hang out right there for real quick. I gotta get it off right there. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Dude, coolant 
it takes so freaking long to clean up. It is the worst fluid because when it dries, it gets all crusty and it stains and it doesn't want to come off. I got the engine looking way cleaner and there's a lot less coolant in there, but I feel like it's one of those things like when, when you get a glitter bomb and you just keep finding glitter and glitter and glitter and glitter and glitter for months, that's how this is gonna be, but it looks way better. There's definitely still remnants of coolant, but like the block actually looks cleaner again and not just covered in dried up crusty coolant. So now that the coolant crossover is out, uh, A, I need to clean this thing up, but B, uh, we need to cut off this trash and I'm going to demolish this thing as soon as I cut it off. So uh, let me get this thing wiped down. We'll pull out the bandsaw, we'll cut that thing off and we'll get the new one ready to be welded on. Uh, I'm not welding it on. I can't weld fluids very well. So the new fabricator is gonna weld on this new one. And then he's also gonna go through and redo some of these bottom welds just to make sure that everything is solid. Um, because uh, we don't want that thing leaking again. Cause that that's no, I don't wanna have to do this again. So we're gonna just gonna do it all right this time. <laughs> Just like that. It's like it never existed. And that was a pretty straight cut too. Pretty proud of that. It was actually a very straight cut. Beautiful. All right, you guys, so let me take off this cylinder, uh, in our case, cylinder six cooling mod. Uh, after I get it off, I'll actually explain to you guys why I'm taking it off and why we're not running one. Um, contrary, contrary to popular belief. Um, I may have to go pick up some more 5 8 hose, but that's whatever if I do. AutoZone sells it, Amazon sells it, I can order some more. So uh, let me pull this thing off real quick and then I'll tell you guys why. So I have the cylinder cooling mod back off the car right now. You guys can see the water line just goes straight up back up to the heater core. So let me explain to you guys why. Cause I'm sure you're wondering like Tanner, why did you buy this and then just take it off the car? Well, I've been doing some more research and I don't feel comfortable. I guess I should say using this anymore after what I've learned. So here we have an EJ. I'm using an EJ because the EJ closely resembles an EG, uh, but for most of you guys, EJ is gonna be what is applicable. So um, on an EJ case half set, you've got this big port here between the case halves. These are, these are the water crossover inside of the block to allow coolant to go from one side to the other side, okay? So when the water pump spins up, pressurizes this, coolant goes from there, goes to this side of the engine, bada bing, bada boom. But that's not the only way the coolant goes over. I just noticed, I never noticed this before. It actually says the cylinder on the engine, two. And four is a little dirty, but it's right there. I never noticed that before, it's kind of cool. So uh, let me flip this guy over one more time. Um, so when the water pump spins up, it fills up these bottom chambers with coolant. Um, you can see there is a block off between the chambers that doesn't allow coolant to go from the bottom to the top. It's all the way across there. Now, I don't have a cylinder head here to be able to show you guys this, but as coolant comes up the bottom here, it goes across the cylinder head and then through the top like that. By adding that mod right here, what you're doing is you're extracting coolant and sending it up to the heater core up here. And you're reducing the amount of coolant, so it's essentially acting as a radiator bypass because you're taking the coolant that's inside of the cylinder head um, and inside of the engine, and you're sending it up through the heater core, and then it's passing through the heater core, coming out of the heater core, going back into the coolant crossover, then going into the radiator. So you're you're just there's no I don't see a point in it. I just after doing the research, if I can find the video, I'll link the video down below. But there's a much better video that I came across uh, from a gentleman in Australia who who shows it. But yeah, so I'm not. I'm I'm not gonna use those anymore. After after discovering what I've discovered, it just takes coolant from the cylinder head and moves it to the heater core. It, I thought it did the opposite. Doesn't do the opposite, sucks it out, doesn't push it in. So instead of the coolant doing what I thought it was doing where it was coming into the chamber, it's actually going out of the chamber. So um, I'm 100% gonna link that video down below for you guys if you guys do wanna watch it. He goes way, way more into depth about this whole mod thing um, than what I just went through. I went through like a 30 second version of it. He has like five, six minute video on it. Um, good watch. Very good watch if you guys are looking into it. So, ah, I think that's all I can do until tomorrow with the STI for the cooling system at least. Now I need to go work on the Evo because I have been meaning to do some of this stuff. So I'm gonna go prep the Evo's engine uh, to accept its, in well, I'm gonna go prep the Evo to accept its engine because uh, I'd like to get the engine in probably next weekend since I'm probably gonna be focused on this for the rest of the week and I can't do anything else today on this up until the rest of the cooling stuff gets dropped off. So let's go swing over to the shop. The main thing that I'm doing at the shop we're just gonna do Evo stuff because I'm bored. I don't want to sit at the house. I have no Subaru parts showing up till tomorrow and I want to work on some cars. So uh, I, gra I grabbed some tape. I grabbed all the bolts and stuff that came in for the Evo. 
Let's go work on the Evo. Let's see what we can go get done. I want to try to get that harness sorted today. Um, I also ordered mufflers for the STI, vibrant performance ones. They're three inch, two of them. So that should help quiet the car down quite a bit, but let's go do Evo stuff for at least a little bit. This will be like a two or three day video. So let's we'll see what we get done. We'll get a lot done. We'll do all the stuff. All right, we've made it to the shop. Now, uh, while I'm here, I'm kind of contemplating trying to throw the 4G63 in the engine bay today, but, uh, before I do that, I want to get the oil pan on, the rear main seal on, get that stuff taken care of. So I need to push this engine forward, get the engine stand pulled down, uh, get it all craned up, or the engine hoist, my bad, get it lifted up, and I have to do it while it's on the hoist. Otherwise, I can't get it on because the rear main seal is a bolt-on case. Like, let me see if I can find it real quick. It is this entire little housing uh, that'll bolt back on to the backside of the engine. Uh, and then the rear main seal goes in there and then I can put the oil pan on because I need this on to be able to put the oil pan on. So let's do some Evo stuff because I don't want to sit at home bored as fuck today. Rear main seal housing is on with our rear main seal. Uh, next up, I need to get the oil pan prepped to go on, and then we can throw the oil pan on. So I gotta clean off all this old gaskety goop crap, uh, clean off the surface. I'll probably wipe down the inside of it one more time, uh, get it prepped, spray it out with some brake clean, and then we'll get our oil pan on. I'm debating on if I should just throw that in today. I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling it. Kind of feeling like I want to put an engine and do an Evo today. I don't know. We'll see how long this takes, and we'll we'll see what the day holds for us. But uh, let's get that thing prepped. Let's get it back on there. Woo, look at that you guys we got an oil pan on here so i don't know if i'm gonna put the motor in tonight but i'm definitely gonna hook up the trans to this thing so uh, i'm tired of having the trans sit over there i actually might just throw this engine in tonight i'm not 100 percent sure if i if we're going to but uh let's at least the transmission bolted up to this thing to get it ready i mean worst case scenario i just let it sit on the ground with the engine hoist supporting it all but tired of seeing this thing sit on an engine stand let's uh let's get a transmission bolted up to this this is supposed to be a subaru video and i'm just going ham on the evo right now but it's whatever let me uh l let's do this well i was gonna put the transmission onto the engine but then i went to go put the clutch on um first i couldn't find this this is a push to pull adapter for this clutch because we have a competition twin disc came with the car, went to go find the pilot bearing. I don't have the pilot bearing. I don't have a pilot bearing. So I need to get a pilot bearing for this thing. On top of that, I'm also missing the transmission to engine plate that houses the starter. I don't have that either. So that's about all I can do on the Evo today. Looks like I'm going to buy more parts for the Evo, unfortunately. So um, that's all I got for you guys today. I'll see you in the morning. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be welding on some mufflers to our STI. Next morning, I got the coolant expansion tank in from Radium. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing assembled real quick. I'll show, I'll give you guys like a quick rundown of everything it comes with. We're gonna get this thing assembled, find a home for it in the car, and then keep going on this cooling system to try to get this thing 100% in the next like couple days. The last thing I'm waiting on, which shows up Sunday, is the new thermostat, so. I mean, hopefully that comes in sooner than later, but. So this is the Radium expansion tank. It comes with pretty much everything you need except for the radiator cap because they offer different ones. That should show up today in the mail, uh, but it comes with like the gasket, all the hardware, the filler neck, the overflow tube, literally everything that you would need for this. So let me go through here, start assembling this thing so that way we can start finding a home for it in the car.
So we're gonna have to do a little bit of fab here to make this uh, expansion tank work. There's not a whole lot of room in here. Bracket that it came with, right? So what I'm thinking is having this guy go right about there behind the manifold and it'll just attach to the manifold. So I'll make a little bracket. I'm not gonna weld it to that. I'll just do some riv nuts. Um, over here, I may have to have a stud welded onto the manifold maybe, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, those fittings, I'll, I'm just gonna have to get some 1 8 NPT to 90s to be able to make them fit, but that's not a big deal. I'll order those today. So um, let me start making a bracket for this thing so that way we can attempt to get it mounted. Because it like this is the only, like realistically, this is the only spot. Like coming to work on this car and engineer it more, that turbo placement is awful. That is the worst spot for a turbo I could think of because everything up here is all free real estate that I can't use because the downpipe's gonna put out so much heat right there. I just can't put anything there. So if we ever go to do a revision on the turbo kit on this car, I'm gonna move the turbo back towards the firewall. Like, it's really cool having it like right there and it's really cool seeing the turbo up in the front of the, like the front of the car, but realistically speaking, um, that's like the worst fucking spot for it. Like if we're being honest here, like back there would be way better. So uh, let me start making a bracket for this guy so that way we can mount it up to that manifold. That was a lot of work for a single bracket, but I'm pretty happy with it and the location that we got. Um, there's really not much room that we have to work with in here, you guys. So, uh, A, I had to get the coolant expansion tank to the highest point of the cooling system, which was about, which was higher than the AOS. So keep that in mind, it had to be taller than the AOS and the AOS sits pretty high already. Um, B, there's not a whole lot of mounting options. So the manifold seemed like the best option. We still, we have to weld on a bracket to the manifold or from the manifold to the bracket for uh, the radium expansion tank, but dude, it looked good. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's a, it's a little big, but pretty happy with it. I will say learning to make your own brackets and whatnot is a fantastic skill to have. Um, if you guys remember when I made brackets for that stupid APR splitter I had on here, it, they were they were awful. Um, I did decide to make the bracket out of steel rather than aluminum. Steel's a little bit stronger so it won't shake as much as aluminum would. Um, so it was a little more difficult to cut through and everything like that. I couldn't use the bandsaw. So angle grinder and cutoff wheel, but Dude, pretty happy with the location. So it bolts up to this bracket that we have down here that holds the coil packs. Um, there are some free real estate right there. So decided to take it. So as you can see, it still shakes a little bit. So if we have one bracket that comes off here to the manifold, we'll just grind off the paint and clean it up. And then I can repaint that one section. Um, it'll it'll work beautifully. And it's, it's literally higher than the AOS. Um, just barely they might be at the exact same level, but um, that'll work for bleeding the cooling system right there And it'll work for helping with temps uh, maintaining and controlling everything you're supposed to mount this 180 degrees the other way, but um, As you guys can see we just we don't have a lot of room for options in here. So Oh, that's awesome. I also got the new radiator cap from Vibrant. This thing's freaking massive. Um, this guy will live roughly in the same spot, right about right there, um, to be able to go down. I think it's just a little bit lower, so it'll be a little bit of a tight fit, but it will fit in there just fine. That cap is way bigger than I thought it was going to be, but you know, that's all right. It'll still fit. It'll still work. Actually, to clear my anxiety, I want to test fit this guy real quick just to, just to make sure it'll fit. You know what I mean? So uh, let me test fit this, actually, just to make sure that we're going to be good on that. Try to play things a little bit safer here. You just toss it right there. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. For this. Okay. Yeah, we're still, we're still good. I may have to redo part of this oil feed line, but that's all right. At least I can mark on here where everything lines up. All right, you guys were also telling me that I needed to get mufflers for the car. Like I said, I, I got some and they're way smaller than I thought. They're, dude, they're so cute. Look at that. You can't tell me that's not the tiniest little muffler you've ever seen. It's just a 
little five inch, three inch diameter, vibrant performance muffler. So uh, one of these will go on each side of the axle back. I'll probably weld these in today um, because I'm waiting on our new friend to show up uh, to evaluate our welding situation for what we need done. But hey, dude, this is cool. So I'm gonna go eat some lunch real quick, uh, come back out. I also got the new sheet metal for the radiator shroud down there. I also got the new fan. Uh, I think all I'm waiting on at this point is the radiator cap for the coolant expansion tank because that is a, oh, and the, uh, the upper thermos stat, which comes in Sunday. I don't know why it wants to take so long, but let me go with some lunch real quick. We'll come back down and uh, I think we'll put in some mufflers and then we'll keep going from there. All right, I'm back from lunch. I also got the bung in for the radiator drain, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a, get a nice hole drilled for this guy. This is half inch NPT. Um, so I'm gonna get the hole drilled so that way it's just ready to be welded in. I already know where I wanna put it, so let's do this guy next. All right, so we got our hole drilled out for our radiator drain here. I just went ahead and rinsed it out with a whole bunch of water too to get all like the loose uh, aluminum out of the radiator. So these are getting picked up here soon to go get welded. These will be back tomorrow. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna finish our AOS or a catch can or catch can expansion tank. Well, on the expansion tank on this side, I think I'm just gonna grind off a little bit of the paint here, um, build a bracket and just weld it to this cast. I don't, I've never welded on cast before. It's not gonna look pretty, um, but if it works, it works. And this lighting is awful. So um, let's just start making a bracket. Beautiful. So I was able to make all the brackets out of steel. So this thing is like hard mounted. It ain't gonna go nowhere, which is exactly what we want. It's also the highest point for the bleed system now. So that should alleviate so many problems we have in the cooling system. Um, in the next video, we'll get it plumbed. I feel like this video is already long enough. Uh, in the next video, we'll get the mufflers welded into the cap back. We'll get all of the new coolant stuff put on the car because that should be coming back tomorrow for us. Uh, but fantastic progress. We've got everything sorted now. We know what we're doing. We have a game plan. This is a key element right here that 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 alone or that expansion tank deleting that thermostat down there moving it up here is that those are going to be our keys to success here with this cooling system also i can tig weld steel way better than i can tig weld aluminum because the the welds on that came out phenomenal then it's steel steel's easy to weld but um I, a, I made the brackets out of steel so that way I could weld them. B, I made them out of steel because they're not going to have as much flex in them as aluminum would. So I'm happy with it. That's the big thing right now. So that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you like the video, if you like the progress we're making, if you like what we're doing and figuring things out, go ahead and hit that like button. Turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be able to put it in one of these corners, not sure which one quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace. Out, homies.